Get it? Ooh, what's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I had to run back to my seat. <laughs> Hope you're all having a lovely day. Thank you so much. I didn't even bring the microphone over. Now I see you, now you hear me, and we're ready to go back into Rubber Soul. Moving on to the next track here, you won't see me, but I see you, hey, each and every one of you. I see you. Listen, you got your webcam cover. You got smiling right over. See, you got, a, you got the webcam cover on? Keep it on, because if you don't have it on, I see you right where you are. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the track. We'll talk about it a little bit after. You won't see me, but I'll see you. Here we go. You know, it really wasn't until I started listening to the Beatles on this channel that I began to actually understand their significance and understand like their place in musical history. I did not grow up listening to the Beatles at all, like at all. Um, it was just one of those groups that, you know, you heard of, obviously, but you never looked into. So uh, getting to what I'm trying to get to is I think that a song like this with You Won't See Me is a perfect pop song with some like really great nuance in there. Love the rhythm of it all. Love the backup. Ooh, la la. I love that. It, it's, it almost reminds me, oh, there's another song. It's like a, a more probably 80s or 90s R&B song. And like, ooh, da da. What is it? Da 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 da. It, maybe it's a 70s song. I'll be there. Okay. I'm not saying one copy of the other. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I just mean like that cadence. I love those harmonies back there. Like it's just so wonderful. Especially backing up the lead vocals. It's just this really wonderful R&B, blue-eyed soul kind of like sound, right? I think that this is the, ty the type of track that to me I would use to show off Ringo. I still think that he is just such an underrated drummer when it comes to music. Yes, he's not the flashiest He's not, you know, throwing a bunch of toms and cool fills everywhere with lightning speed. It's not about that. It's how he actually fits in with the groove of the Beatles and their music. And what he brings is a certain charm. And yes, some of those drum patterns are quite nifty. And I think, like, this is one of them here. <laughs> like, the actual rhythm is diverse and interesting without being boring. Even though... There is a relative simplicity to what he's playing. I would say that he is like the epitome of a humble brag in that his humble or his drumming is relatively humble, but you can still brag about the structures that he comes up with. There's a lot of creativity in there. Um, uh, what was I going to say? The hi-hat obviously stands out a lot. So when you're listening to the main drum beat, the main groove is just normal, right? You hear the hi-hat as it should be in the mix with the rest of the drums. But then there's that, that hi-hat that comes up further up in the mix like it's it's higher and I'm like okay that kind of stands out and at first I thought it was going to be another member of the Beatles like playing that hi-hat just in the midst but then I kind of sorted myself out and yes Ringo can do da, 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 and then go back to it so I'm pretty sure that there's going to be two hi-hats then his main one that he has well he's left-handed or right-handed no he's left-handed because I remember uh his drum set is in reverse because that's how he came up with the drum beat for uh come together all right, that was a good video. I don't remember. It's a video online. You can find it somewhere. Anyways, they interviewed Ringo on the Making of Come Together, and that's when I learned that he was left-handed. So he switched around his drum set, and that's where he got the, the famous role there. Anyways, um, <laughs> what I was saying is that there's probably a, another hi-hat, maybe on a different side, or maybe right, who knows where it is on the drum set, but there's probably a microphone that's closer to that hi-hat. So when he comes off of his main beat and goes to the t -t -t -t, it's like another hi-hat and it's closer literally microphone wise so you get a more in front of you effect. And I love how that stands out in the verse, but then when it moves into, I don't even know what it is, like the pre-chorus, the break, I don't know, another section. Uh, he, he plays more fully on that specific hi-hat. It's just a cool way of breaking up the pattern. And then he begins to change the rhythm a little bit here and there. It's just a really wonderful way that that's done. At that moment when the music changes according to the hi-hat, uh, well, I just said it, the music changes as well. I like how the piano begins to hit those chords more fully and directly at that point, and everything just begins to stack up on that particular moment. I just think that's a really cool way to change the rhythm with the structure of the song. Excuse me. Um, 
and, and just keep it really interesting. And I think that this is a track that kind of perfectly captures that. That's cool. When I call you up, your line's engaged. I've had enough, so actor age. <laughs> we have lost that time. The time that was so hard to find, and I will lose my mind. If you won't see me, you won't see me. <laughs> well, this, is a, this is a breakup song of sorts. If you won't see me, <clears throat> you won't see me. I don't know why I should want to hide. Or, I'm sorry, I don't know why you should want to hide. But I can't get through. My hands are tied. I don't, or I won't want to stay. I don't have much to say. But I get turned away. Time after time, you refuse to even listen. I wouldn't mind if I knew what I was missing. Though the days are few, they're filled with tears, and since I lost you, it feels like years. Yes, it seems so long, girl, since you've been gone, and I just can't go on. And it goes on from there. Same lyrics are repeated. Listen, he says, if you won't see me, then <laughs> you won't see me. I'm done. It's over. It's finished. We're done with that. It's gone. We're done. You lose. Good go. day, sir. Good day. Goodbye. Uh, looking at the track, it says, let's see, it's written by McCartney, credited to Lennon McCartney. Uh, the lyrics address McCartney's troubled relationship with Jane Asher and her desire to pursue a career as a stage and film actress. Um, let's see, the Beatles recorded the song during what Mark Lewison says or describes as a marathon final recording session for this album to ensure the album's pre-Christmas date. You got to get it out before Christmas so that everybody can have, have filled in their stockings. Uh, let's see. Let's leave some of the information here. After an argument, they briefly ended their relationship. When he attempted to telephone her in Bristol, Asher rejected him by not returning his calls. McCartney later said that it was shattering to be without her. Well, that perfectly goes with the lines of, uh, where was it in the beginning here? Uh, there you go. Your lines engaged. There you go. You won't see me. You won't. Here you go. Hiding. Let's see. Let's see what else we can see about this one. An uh, all-night session that started at 6 p.m., the deadline for completing the album was up, and the band needed to record three songs that night in addition to finishing the work in I'm Looking Through You. As a result, they cut the song in only two takes. They got it done. It was the longest track the Beatles had recorded up to that point. That point at three minutes and 22 seconds. It's not, not the longest song, but it got them through. Uh, I'm trying to find information on that hi-hat there. Um, you know what I could do instead of, like, reading? Let's do it. Let's control left this thing. Should get, us, should get us where we want. Star augmented his drum part with a separate hi-hat overdub, adding rhythmic accents throughout the song. Okay, so he overdubbed it. He didn't just play it straight and have a second. I, I genuinely thought there would be a second hi-hat filling that sound, just because of the way that it played there. And I guess there's a popular cover by Anne Murray as well. So anyways, really great track. I really think that that kind of wonderfully captures, uh, at least to an, an extent, I would say, the, the drumming creativity behind Ringo. I think so. Let me know what you guys think, though. The comments below. Follow me over on Twitter. Support the channel on Patreon. Thank you, as always, for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. Come back tomorrow, and I'll see you all then. Bye, guys.